One of the major challenges facing African farmers is low soil fertility. To address this, farmers are increasingly encouraged to buy expensive inorganic fertilizers, which push up the price of food production, pollute the environment, increase greenhouse gas emissions, and do nothing to increase soil fertility in the long term. But recently, African farmers have been introduced to an alternative, homemade biofertilizers, pioneered in Cuba during the 1990s, are being brought to Africa through the work of a Colombian farmer, scientist and trainer. These biofertilizers are strengthening the alternatives already being developed and spread throughout Africa by African farmers. All over the world, the practice of agroecology or organic agriculture has suffered from a lack of support from science. The scientific world has largely put its backing behind industrial or chemical agriculture. It is time this changed as we look for a sustainable way to farm that benefits farmers properly and produces nutritious food. September 2018, something unusual happened in Chinika as the university came to the village. Forty farmers and extension workers from Chinika and other wards in Gutu district joined 30 farmers and NGO officers from across Zimbabwe and South Africa to train in fermented biofertilizer production. The participants also learnt some of the science behind these organic fertilizers in a course that constantly mixed theory and practice. The training was organised and supported by the Seed and Knowledge Initiative and followed a similar event at Kasisi Agricultural Training Centre in Zambia the previous week. The aim was to share experiences from smallholder farmers in South America. The two trainers, Juan Fran Lopez and Carlos Pons, are both students of the Colombian farmer, scientist and trainer Jairo Restrepo who has been a forerunner in the research and promotion of fermented biofertilizers. Simplify the microbes. Most of them go. <laughs> Juan Fran and Carlos explained in careful and simple detail why microbes are so important for farmers. Microbes are tiny creatures that cannot be seen with the naked eye. They include many species of fungi and bacteria, as well as other species with more unusual names. We don't need to know their names to work with them. So I say that it's important to spray everywhere. The leaves, the trunk, but it's very important to have organic matter. The organic matter is the house for the microbes. We can go into a naturally wooded area and collect microbes from just above the soil and just below the leaf cover. This is where they flourish. Why is a natural forest or woodland so healthy and stable? Largely because of the work of these trillions of tiny creatures constantly working to keep it that way. And they've been doing it for billions of years. Students at the Chinika workshop learned how to multiply these native microbes by mixing them with molasses or sugar and bran and packing the mixture tightly into a barrel where they are left for a month. The students learned how to use this abundance of microbes to make a fermentation full of minerals, vitamins, amino acids, hormones and more. They learned what happens during fermentation, how it starts as an alcoholic ferment and then becomes a lactic one because of the milk that is put into the mixture. And all the time during the fermentation, nutrients are being produced. All in all, 
they learnt over 20 recipes to strengthen what they are already doing in organic farming. Potassium, molybdenum, cobalt, and tungsten. Morning sessions in the classroom explaining the science of microbes, minerals, and ferments were followed by practicals in the late morning and afternoon. These practicals included how to make a quick maturing compost-like mixture called bokashi that is ready in 12 to 15 days. Bokashi is also a fermentation made with a variety of materials along with yeast and molasses or sugar. The heat is turned daily and the temperature carefully controlled. Practicals also included how to turn bones into a substance that can feed plants much needed phosphorus. The Chinika participants learnt how to make lactic acid bacteria, or LAB as it's known, from milk and rice water. LAB can be used in many situations to speed up decomposition. It costs virtually nothing to make and anyone can do it. They learned how to coat seeds with a mineral mix, as well as how to use a hormone mix to encourage plant growth. They also learnt how to make and store various brews that can help farmers with pest management. One of these, known as apichi, is made from chilies, garlic, ginger and alcohol. It can be stored for a long time and used when needed. Another pesticide which shows promise in controlling fall armyworm is cooked using basic soap and ash. One evening the participants drank a little local brew and celebrated with song and dance. Above all, this training was about bringing science to the farmers. For too long, science has been something that happens in laboratories and benefits large companies. Let's bring science back to the farms. Let scientists and farmers work together in a way that mimics nature and creates a healthy and productive farming environment. Let's use science along with the vast amount of local knowledge that is everywhere but often ignored to create a modern 21st century agriculture that enriches the environment for our children rather than destroying it while producing a diversity of food rich in nutrients. Okay.